Hello, and welcome to all those who are worshiping with us on this day on Sunday, or as I'm going to start calling it, if you're home watching worship on a different day or different time. I was a meeting with many clergy and lay leaders yesterday, and I understand the new term for our online worship is pajama worship. So welcome. On this day, we are celebrating a little bit more than what we normally do in our life with God. Uh, we've, I'll talk about that a little bit more, but at the beginning of our service here, there are slides that are available to the online viewers to celebrate four members of the two congregations, Grace Lutheran in Horseshoe Bend, as well as Redeemer here in Boise, as we recognize four young members who are graduating from either high school or college. You'll see their names on the, on the images if you're at home. For us who are gathered in person, the two who are graduating here at Redeemer are Julia and, and I, you know, still relatively new. So is Julia and her family, are they gathered with us? Will they be here? Might be late. Okay, all right. Um, the, what I wanted to ask them is how I can prevent butchering their last names. La, Le Bouf? La Beth. La Beth. So Julia La Beth is graduated or has graduated from Bora High School. And then Madeline, and I think I've got the last name correct here, Wombolt? Yes. And you are here sitting in the sun. Wonderful. Um, so she graduates from Timberline High School. So you hear, you'll hear a little bit more about them as we, we worship today. The announcements that I have before we begin our worship are, is an invitation concerning the annual meeting of the Redeemer Congregation. Grace Horseshoe Bend will have one later, probably in July, but Redeemer's annual meeting will be on the 20th of this month, 20th of June. It'll be an online a Zoom meeting. You'll hear updates, what's going on in our time of disorientation, and you'll be asked to vote, most likely to vote on a recommendation from the call committee to continue your relationship with Grace in Horseshoe Bend. That simply means that Redeemer, who is the congregation who will initiate the call to your next regularly called pastor, will agree to share that pastor with Horseshoe Bend. I believe the members of Grace are praying for you because Redeemer is the one with the responsibility to say, yes, we will continue. We feel God is calling us to do that. Or no, we don't feel God is calling us to continue in that relationship. So they're praying for you, and I'm pretty sure they're praying that you will say yes. So that's going to be the important vote that will be happening on the 20th. And then you'll hear about a lot of other things. One of the other things the many ministries that are continuing within Redeemer, but will be the issue about how we are continuing to live through this time of COVID. A lot of disorientation, and you'll hear that word again this morning, but the implementation team has continued to do a wonderful job of being clear about the science and trusting those in our community who are helping with the health of our community. The state as a whole is maybe not moving as fast as people in other states. So the challenge for this congregation is to remain true and be an example, if you will, of how we trust and we listen to those who have only our best interest in mind. So on that day, we will hear an update about where we are in that process. But my hope is that we will also be able to discuss a little bit 
about the future of worship here at Redeemer, where it might be as we continue to live through this pandemic that has everybody on edge, everybody edgy, and has been with us longer than we want and may continue to be with us for much longer than we want. We don't know, but we do know we are God's people and we are called to be a light of God to the world at this time. So those are coming up. So please, if you're able, plan to be a part of the congregational Zoom meeting, which will be 11, 15 a.m. on Sunday morning, the 20th of June. Okay, plenty of announcements. You'll notice that in our step two for, for COVID uh, and how we live through this is that worship is only supposed to be 30 minutes long. That's gonna be my biggest challenge because I probably used up 10 minutes of the 30 minutes just with the announcements. Eight, so, okay. So we'll move on a little bit. So this morning, we, for those who are worshiping with us as home as well, it is the first Sunday of the month when we celebrate the fullness of God's presence through the sacrament of Holy Communion. So at this point, if you're at home, I'd invite you to retrieve your elements, wine or grape juice, bread or cracker. And we, as we are gathered here, we should all here have our own elements for, for worship on, on this morning as well. Okay, so let's begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. This morning we use our corporate forgiveness, corporate confession and forgiveness. We confess our sins before God and one another. God of joy and sorrow, we come into your house with the noise and cares of the world bearing down on us. We expect you to fix it or to make it go away. Instead, you offer space for us to repent, refresh, and restore. Forgive our short-sightedness. Forgive us our selfishness. For us, our impatience. Show us how to enter your house with gratitude and praise. Our God receives our pleas with open ears and a forgiving heart. Receive now the entire forgiveness of all your sins and be washed with the cleansing sound of God's grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. reading today is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is God that made us, and we are God's. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to God. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Word of God, way of life, thanks be to God.
Redeemer continues to use the, as well as Grace, continues to use the narrative lectionary for identifying the topics and the readings for our worship during this time. Last week was the first week of a six-week series for the congregation to invest some time on what is considered the heart and soul of worship and the life of a community. That is what we call the Psalter or the Psalms, the Psalms. So last week, you would have heard Psalm 1. Um, I understand the supply pastor, John, um, chose a different text. So today I'm not going to go back there. I may go back into it a little bit because last week, this week, and four more weeks, we are going to have as the primary reading, the only reading, will be one of the Psalms. So of the Psalms, again, uh, this is more of a, would be more of a dialogue sermon than uh, me just pontificating. But the Psalms sometimes get overlooked in our lives. So if, if I'm talking about the Psalms and you know all this, just say, David, forget the Psalms, let's move on to something else. But the Psalms, um, part of our tradition, a part It's a part of who we are. It's a part of who Jesus was. It's a part of our Jewish brothers and sisters. The Psalms are poetry, different from much of the other parts of our Holy Scripture. They're poetry that invites people in worship, individually, collectively, to take everything that poetry has to offer, images, notions, sounds, and in different times and different ages through that poetry than to experience our life in our, in our day. So it's about the challenges of being human and the questions we have as a human and how we live our life before God and with each other. We're not God. We're finite. But the Psalms are poetry that opens up imagination. You'll hear me talk about this again, but there's, there's a couple of people who are at the center of our understanding of the Psalms and our time and our age. One of them is Walter Brueggemann, uh, a wonderful professor, n- no longer, I mean, now retired, uh, but he's written extensively about the Psalms and about all that is there for us, for us to embrace. But what I want to do is just read a little caption because it'll identify three main parts that we will use, three main lenses, if you will, that we'll use as we hear and embody uh, the Psalms over these next few weeks. So again, as I mentioned, it's a way to enter creatively, poetically, all the, the different levels of our human dimensions. Here's what he says. Uh, In a simple schematic fashion, our lives, our life and faith, consist in moving with God in terms of three things. One, being securely oriented. Oriented. Two, being painfully disoriented. And three, being securely oriented again, reoriented. The general way of speaking can apply to our self-acceptance, our relationships to significant others, our participation in public issues. It can permit us to speak of our passages, the life cycles, stages of growth, and identity crises. It can permit us to be honest about what is happening to us. Most of all, it may provide us a way to think about the Psalms in relationship 
in relation to our common human experience. For each of God's children is in transit along the flow of orientation, disorientation, and reorientation. The first situation in the scheme, that of being securely oriented, is a situation of equilibrium, balance. While we all yearn for it, it is not very interesting, and it does not produce great prayer or powerful song. It consists in being well settled, knowing that life makes sense and God is well placed in heaven, presiding but not bothering. This is the mood of most of much of the middle class church. In terms of the Bible, this attitude of equilibrium and safe orientation is best reflected in the teachings of the old Proverbs, which affirm that life is equitable, symmetrical, and well proportioned. This mood of humanness is minimal in the Psalms. Such Psalms reflect confident well being. In order to pray them, we must locate either in our lives or in the lives of other situations of such confidence, buoyant, successful living. But this is a minor theme in the Psalms and not very provocative. The Psalms mostly do not emerge out of such situations of equilibrium. Rather, people are driven to such poignant prayer and song as are found in the Psalms precisely by experiences of dislocation and relocation. It is experiences of being overwhelmed, nearly destroyed, and surprisingly given life, which empower us to pray and to sing. Orientation, disorientation, and reorientation. And what I find humorous is when he speaks that most of the American church, our church, this congregation, you know, when everything's fine, it's not very exciting. We experience the God when things become disoriented. This past year and a half, for many of us, you know, a first world, all world challenge, I mean, we're experiencing a lot of disorientation. Things are up, things are sideways. We don't know where the future is. We're up, we're back. It's disoriented. Many of the prayers of the Psalms and the songs of Psalms are about, God, what's going on? Help us, lead us. And there's a lot of language and we'll get into some of those other Psalms in the next few Sundays. And then there's the Psalms of, of reorientation, the surprise awareness that God is present and that we are invited back into a, a, a place of joy and contentment never really thought of or experienced. The Psalm we have today, Psalm 100, is actually a doxology that begins with the readings of, of these poems back in verse 93 of the Psalms. And I invite you to read them because it reflects a lot about what's going on even in our life. And the Psalms are wonderful because they're so, they're so contextual, they're so filled with images, and a lot of people in the church get uncomfortable. Like, God, would you really just cut off the heads of all my enemies? You know, just get rid of all of them. You know, whatever the enemy might be. We could say, God, just cut off the head of COVID or something like that, as we live into the poems of these psalms. But today's psalm is the conclusion when people have been worshiping together, a corporate psalm, if you will, of reorientation. It's a time when it's been known as the, in the collective when people would gather all the gifts and realize that they are one with God and God takes care of them. And it's full of stuff that many of us, even as we sit here with our blankets and our mask, are, you know, uh, could make us a little challenge or challenge us a little. When it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, 
all the earth, worship with gladness, come into his presence. I mean, how often do our mainline churches have people up and dancing and hitting cymbals and, you know, crying out? This is what is happening in the psalm, giving freedom or inviting people to live their whole life into the joy of God. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give them thanks. God is good. God's love endures forever. Faithfulness to every and all generations. So, rather than making you get up and sing, and I didn't bring any clanging noises, you're lucky I don't have my stash of toys here for you to play with. We are here because in the midst of all this disorientation, we can still claim and know God is good because life continues and wonderful things happen. On this day, we celebrate the fullness, the journey in this congregation of two young women who've been successful in their lives so far in this whole chaotic, chaotic world. They've graduated from high school. They're at a new stage. Shortly, after a summer of, I know, Lori, what are you going to do this summer? Not Lori. Well, Madeline. Madeline. I know what your mom's doing. She's driving me around to meetings. But Madeline, I'm assuming you've got stuff planned for this summer. And you're getting excited about going to a school just across the river from the best school in Idaho, the one I went to. <laughs> so you're going to be headed off to have a lot of fun, and you've done a whole lot to get to where you are today. And as I can see those around you, your sisters aren't here, but I think your dad and mom are, are thankful to God because you're ready to to move on to the next step. And they're happy for you. And they're gifted because of your life, what you've gifted to them. And you will live into your own hopes and there are many hopes for you as well. So it's pretty exciting about this transition that you're in. And this psalm for both Madeline and, and Julia is that God is with you. And this congregation has, in one or some part, been a part of that. So this psalm speaks to giving thanks to God for your life, praying that and knowing that God will continue to be with you as you move forward. Because I know the dorms, you know, they've got lots of rules. We have challenges with following our rules here. But for those of us who've gone on to university, many of those rules somehow don't get followed when you're a freshman or a junior, or a senior, but you'll get through it. And my expectation, you'll do, do really well. This congregation loves you. I don't know you personally, but as I'm getting to know the congregation, there is a lot of love and concern for each other in this community. Now the quilters who are part of this community, are there any quilters here today? None of the quilters here today? Yes, we have a quilter here today. They want to make sure well, they want to make sure okay, here's, here's my age catching up me. Did I say Madeline or Julia? Madeline. Madeline. And I'm, off, and I'm off camera. So actually, I'll stay here for the camera for our other audience. But Madeline, will you please come up here? We'll be socially distanced. I'll plant it here and back up. This is just one token of a gift to say thank you for your life and a prayer that God continues to be with you through school and for all the journeys that awaits you. It's a little bit of love. 
mine I had to have rebuilt when I received one from the, uh, an old quilting group. Um, I had to have new tucking put in because it became my college baby blanket. <laughs> I know a few kids who actually lost their cookies on the blanket, but I trust that, that won't happen to you. God be with you. Before you go away, we're going to say a little prayer for her. And, and I'll announce this ahead of time because we're doing communion today and I do have your communion bread. I'll give it to you now. It's individually wrapped, but it comes from one of my favorite greasy spoons, the chef's hut. Anybody know that little yeah. greasy spoon? They make really good cinnamon buns. Oh, yeah. That's a little slice of that. And in the, uh, and to honor the, the frivolity of the psalm of doing things crazy and noisy, you'll be able to take this and if you connect with any faith community in college, say, you know, at the church, my home church, we do, hol we do Holy Communion, we do the Eucharist with, with cinnamon bread, with uh, cinnamon rolls. Some will say, well, we do it with Fritos, but you can say we at least have cinnamon rolls, plus these little tasty wafers that don't really taste like anything. So I invite you to eat a lot of cinnamon rolls celebrating the Eucharist now and throughout your life. So let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for life. We thank you for being reorientated even this time of disorientation and we hope and pray that you will continue to be a presence with Madeline in her life. And she experiences this orientation, but claims and holds on to you as she finds herself being reorientated with the love that surrounds her in her family, in her friends, and in the community of this place, Redeemer Lutheran. Be with her now and always. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Thanks. Cantar al Señor, un cantico nuevo, cantar al Señor, un cantico nuevo, cantar al Señor, un cantico nuevo, cantar al Señor, cantar al Señor. O oh, sing to the Lord, O oh, sing God a new song, O oh, sing to the Lord, O oh, sing God a new song, O oh, sing to the Lord, O oh, sing God a new song, sing to our God, O oh, sing to our God. Let us pray. For the time of inconsolable sorrow, for the times of unbridled joy, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Loving God, accept the songs of our hearts, O God, robust or silent, harmonious or off-key, assuring us that what is offered with joy is always received with affection. We step over the threshold into a season of new beginnings, refreshment and recreation with grateful hearts. Return us to a sense of awe at this vast planet, that we might enjoy your blessings and use our energies to renew ourselves and others who need a rest. Steadfast Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Creator of the universe, we on earth cannot help but worship you and the gifts of resources and beauty. It's in the fabric of who you have made us to be. Make us good stewards of all creation during this time of wildfires, drought, storms, and floods. Keep us connected and at one with all you have made and with all people who are created in your image. Steadfast Lord, hear our prayer. Healing and compassionate Lord, we know that we can trust your faithfulness, especially when we find ourselves most in need. Refresh us and all those we name before you with your healing touch, especially those on our prayer list and those we name at this time. Make us whole again. Steadfast Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Steadfast Lord, 
Your hands are sure and strong, and you hold all the prayers we offer in your loving embrace. Embolden us to be the answer that you seek to bring about in the new world, in the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. At this At this time at home and those who are gathered here on the lawn, I invite you to gather your elements of, of wine or juice, of crackers, or in Madeline's, in my case, a cinnamon roll. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he gave thanks. He took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, his resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O God. O Lord, and unite us with all the wills of those who share this heavenly food. And may the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord to whom and with whom you and the Holy Spirit all glory is given, now and forever. Amen. And as Jesus taught us to pray, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever, amen. Come, the banquet for all is now ready. For Madeline and me, we've got the special treat of cinnamon buns this morning. And together, the bread, the body of Christ given for you. And you don't know this, but I've got coffee to go with my cinnamon rod. No, I'm teasing. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now receive the blessing. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you and especially on this day, Madeline, as she has gathered with us, to look upon her and all of us with favor and give us your peace. Amen. We now go in peace to serve the Lord. We say, thanks be to God.